Many people who are just starting out with Power BI are working with files on their local computer and to refresh their reports, they are clicking the refresh button in the toolbar up here. And that can be okay for a while. However, eventually most people decide that they want to automate this process by scheduling refresh. And I'm gonna go through a few best practices as well as we go along to help you get started out on the right track because it's a lot easier to start from the right place rather than go back and fix it later. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through another couple ideas for you to take the automation one step further. The first step is to look at where your file and folder sources are right now and move them to SharePoint Online. I have tutorials that explain exactly how to do this step by step. I'm going to link those in the video description. There's one for individual files and one for folder sources because the process is a little bit different between the two. This is actually pretty straightforward and it is necessary because in Power BI, you schedule a refresh in the cloud service and the cloud service does not have access to your computer. You can technically give it access to your computer by installing a gateway, but then you have to leave your computer and the gateway running all the time for the scheduled refresh to work. And you want this thing to keep running if you go on vacation anyway, okay? And let's talk about OneDrive for a second here too. Your OneDrive is like your personal SharePoint storage. You can technically put your files in there for this purpose, but it's better to put it in a SharePoint team site because your OneDrive only exists as part of your account. So if you leave your organization, everything in there gets deleted. Step two, so you have your source files in SharePoint and your PBIX file is pointed at them. Now you need to publish your report to the Power BI service. Publishing your report is going to be how you let other people view it without having Power BI desktop installed. This will not grant access to your report except for people who are members of the workspace that you publish it to. So don't worry about that. It does need to be published in order to schedule the refresh on it. So we're going to do that now. You'll notice you have a personal workspace to publish to this my workspace here. You can use that if you absolutely need to. However, it is better to use a shared team workspace. If you don't already have a shared workspace to publish to, you can create one. So for me, if I go to workspaces on the left here and then click on new workspace, it will let me create one and click apply. And you can add members with this manage access button if you need to. You get to choose their role. So whether they're a viewer, contributor, or a member. By the way, if you're looking to grant access to your report, don't be adding the individual users as viewers of the workspace. That's not how you grant access in Power BI. It's much better to share the specific report that you want to grant access to or to use an app. So I'm going to publish this thing. And when it's done publishing, it's going to give you a link to open in the web service. So I'm just going to click on that. And then to get to the place where I need to schedule a refresh, I click on this ellipses menu up here. Go to view data set. And then I go to the refresh menu here, the little carrot next to it and click on schedule refresh. You'll notice right away that it says failed to test the connection to your day source. Please retry your credentials. This is totally normal for SharePoint online sources. What you do is you have to set those credentials that it's using because the web service doesn't automatically know which credentials it should be connecting to the data with. So we're going to click on edit credentials, and this is usually pretty quick and easy. You do need to change this authentication method. It always defaults to anonymous, change it to OAuth2, and then set your privacy level. This is usually going to be organizational. This is basically just saying, what type of data is this? And then click on sign in, select your account, and we're done with that part. There is a gateway section here. If you're using SharePoint Online, you do not need to use a gateway. That is only necessary for data sources that live on premise. So SharePoint server, SQL server, that kind of thing. Now go down to the refresh section and turn on your refresh schedule here. Daily is a good one to start with, but you can also choose weekly if you want and then set your time zone. And for the times, it's worthwhile to note that it's going to automatically do your refresh at midnight. If you want it to refresh at another time, you need to specify that here. And it's a good idea to stagger these so that not everything in your organization is refreshing at the default refresh time, right? Because if everything refreshes at the same time, it's much more likely to fail because you have limited resources available to work with on those refreshes. So next, set a refresh failure notification. It's going to automatically 
go to you, it is a good idea to also email other people. So for instance, a distribution group is a good option here, something where members can be added and removed over time where you don't have to go back into every single data source and add and remove people from the specific notifications. People very frequently skip this step, but it is actually really important because if you leave your organization, your data refreshes are going to fail. And when they fail, if the notifications are only going to your account, nobody will know until your users are wondering why the data is stale, okay? So one thing that I kind of glossed over there that's very important is that this refresh is using your account. This will work for smaller projects, short-term projects, that kind of thing. If you have something that you want to outlast yourself, you probably want to look into getting a service account that is used to run the refresh. So a service account is a licensed account that is not attached to any one particular person. So you can schedule refreshes with the service account. You just take over the data set. Essentially, there's a takeover button when the account views it. If you do this, make sure to share any of the sources that you are using with the service account because it needs read permission on those to run the refresh. So if you're using a SharePoint source, add that user to the SharePoint site. It would also need to be a data set owner, so the owner level of permissions on the workspace in order to take over the data set. So click on apply in this section. And there's one more thing we need to do before we're done here, and that is to share our report. So this report that we published is private to just the workspace until we share it. So if you want other people to be able to see this report as a viewer, you need to share it first. I clicked on the report in the left navigation. If it doesn't show up here for you, just go to your workspaces list under workspaces here, and then go to the workspace that you published to and click on the share icon next to the report. So that's the one that says type report next to it. Your options are people in your organization with a link. So that's anybody who happens to have the link can use it or specific people. And you can decide whether or not you want them to be able to share the report also, or whether you want them to be able to build with the content in the report. It's notable that the feature called Analyze with Excel, which lets you open the data set in Excel, requires build permission. So if you want people to be able to do that, check this box. And just as an FYI, you can let people export things from your report to Excel without this permission level. It's just if you want them to be able to connect to the entire data set in Excel that this needs to be done. So click Apply and then enter the people's names that you wanna share it with. Distribution groups will work here, Active Directory groups will work here, Microsoft 365 groups will work here, or individual names. So our refresh is scheduled. You can tell because this column that says next refresh has a date and time in it. If it weren't scheduled, you wouldn't see anything here. What I like to do right away when I schedule a new refresh is just test it in the service to make sure it works. So I click on this refresh button here just to make sure that it runs without any errors. So what this is doing when it refreshes is it's going back and checking those Excel files that we put in our SharePoint site. It's always better to work directly with database sources when you're using Power BI, if you have that available, but I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you are working with file sources out of necessity. So I wanna mention that it is possible to automate the Excel export and upload process using Microsoft 365 tools. For example, um, Power Automate Desktop is a tool that has a screen recorder where it can record what you are clicking on in a browser and all of the steps that you do to export files from a system. I'm planning on doing a video on that in the future. So if you want to be notified when that comes out, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.